Hi again. Today I want to take a look at alkanes, in particular their structures and some of their physical properties. So let's begin by taking a quick look at their structures. The first thing you'll notice is that they contain only the elements hydrogen and carbon, hence they're called hydrocarbons. And the word saturated is used to mean they're full. They're full of hydrogens. They can't hold any more. As far as naming these chemicals, they all finish with the name A-N-E on the end, or ane. And the prefix, or the part in front, is used to designate how many carbons are present. So meth will represent one carbon, eth two, pro three, bute four, penta five, and hexa six. These molecules generally aren't polar for two reasons. First of all, the difference in electronegativity between the carbon and the hydrogen is pretty small, 0.04 which is sort of on the border of being considered insignificant. And the molecules are symmetrical, so their overall dipoles tend to cancel, and they have no overall polarity. They're also considered some of the least reactive of the organic molecules for a couple of reasons. First of all, being not polar, they don't tend to attract polar substances towards them to attack them or react with them. And also the strength of the carbon-carbon and the carbon-hydrogen bonds are relatively strong compared to other bond strengths. Let's look at how we name these chemicals. So I'll start with this branched alkane. We begin by identifying the longest continuous chain, and this derives the parent name. So here in the six carbon molecule, like number six is hex. So this is going to be called something hexane. I then number my carbons from the end closest to the branches. So I have an option here of the red numbers starting from left to right or from right to left. I can see here that my side branches are located using the blue numbers at two and three. That's a lower combination than four and five with the red. So I'm gonna ignore the red numbers and use the blue numbers for numbering. I then identify my side branches. Here I've got two branches off to the side and here's a little table of their names. A little bit about how those are arrived at. This first branch is one carbon, so I use the prefix meth, and il is used to represent uh, a radical group. You'll remember methane, CH4, and this methyl, CH3. I've also placed the address or location of where that side group is. If there's any common groups, I group them together. For instance, if there was two methyls, I would call it dimethyl. In this case, I don't have to apply that rule. And now I'll bring the prefixes down and put them with the name. And I list them in alphabetical order, hence eth comes before meth. And this is the general formula we use to name the molecules. We start off with an address or a location, and then we name a branch. And if there's more, then another address and another branch, all separated by hyphens. The final branch and parent name combination are merged together in one word in this case, methyl hexane. Let's try another one. First thing I notice is a three carbon chain here. So it's gonna be called something propane and I can number it and from either end, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll get the same side groups located at the same locations. So we'll go with the red numbers. Side group here is chloro. And so I give the address one chloro. Also, the others two and three chloro. In this case, I can employ my fourth rule. I'm going to group them together and call them trichloro. And I also have to give the address of each chlorine. This is a point some students often forget, is you need to have a number for each one. So for instance, this one, one, two, three, trichloropropane. Had they all been attached to the first carbon, I would have to give it a one, one, one trichloropropane. Okay, a little bit more challenging one here. Uh, at first glance, you might recognize this as being a pentane, a five carbon chain. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you can find a longer continuous chain of carbon. So I'm gonna go with the red numbers here. This is gonna be a hexane because it's a longer continuous chain of carbon. I then will also start to number my compound. So the red numbers and here my blue numbers. Now in the case of the red numbers, I get branches at three and four and the blue numbers three and four. So maybe it won't matter. So here I'll identify my side group, methyl. I'll use the blue numbers for now, calling them both three methyl. 
and identifying the top group, that's an ethyl group, 4-ethyl. In this case, I can employ the fourth rule. I can group my methyls together and make it dimethyl. But when you're placing these in alphabetical order, we don't uh, pay any attention to the di, tri, or tetra group. So again, I'm going to list the ethyl first and the methyl second. Now, that's the use of the blue numbers. How would this have changed if I'd used the red numbers? Well, I then would have had to call this 3-ethyl-4-4-dimethyl. We can see here that this is a lower combination of numbers. The 4-3-3 is a lower combination than 3-4-4. So the name I had below here would be the correct one. And we should use the blue numbers here because they give us a lower combination of numbers. Structural isomers are, are chemicals that share the same chemical formula but different structures. So consider, for instance, C4H10 or butane. We can draw it in two storms. One, straight line, in which case we call it butane, but we could also consider a three carbon chain with a branch in the middle, 2-methylpropane. In some cases, the two is left off because there's no other location it could be. If I put the methyl group on one or three, it would just be butane again. So if it's considered redundant, sometimes you can leave the number off. Anyway, so here are the two different structures. They have slightly different physical properties with the butane having slightly stronger intermolecular forces. Why is that? They're both the same size. It has to do with the surface area that can contact between the two of them. Butane being more linear can stack closer together, which enhances my London dispersion force compared to the methyl propane. Pentane, C5H12. Let's look at how many varieties we can come up with it. One would be the straight chain form called pentane. I next begin with a four carbon chain with a methyl group at different locations. So here I put it at the second carbon. So this would be two methyl butane. What about if I move the methyl group to the third carbon? Well, that's really the first second molecule just flipped. Three methyl would be the same as two methyl. So that's not really a new structure. Let's move the methyl now to the end of the chain. Well, this really is just the first molecule I've drawn. It's a five carbon continuous molecule. So again, it's not anything new. So I've exhausted all the possibilities here with the four carbon chain. The next one to try then is our three carbon chain with two methyl groups attached. So I'll put them both on the middle carbon. And this would be 2,2-dimethylpropane. Now, no matter where I move those methyl groups, I will only recreate one of the first two molecules. So I've exhausted all of my possibilities. This particular formula has three isomers. The number of isomers tends to grow almost exponentially. So if you were to go up to something like decane, a 10 carbon chain, you would come up with as many as 75 isomers. So that's going to serve as my introduction. We'll do more on reactions with alkanes in our next program. And again, don't hesitate to give a comment or even a question or two. You can be sure your colleagues or even I might get back to you about how to answer it. Thanks again.